Our text is gospel lesson from the seventh chapter of Mark. In Jesus' name, Amen. If Jesus Christ had a Twitter account, he said he only had 600,000 followers. That's a drop in the bucket when you compare it to the over 100 million that Justin Bieber had. <laughs> Former President Barack Obama comes in in a respectable 90 million. And former President Donald Trump lagged way behind with 35 million until his account was <laughs> Based on the gospel for today, it's safe to assume that Jesus would have had no interest in a Twitter. Rather, he seeks the Rather than seeking attention and allocating to the crowds, we find Jesus doing quite the opposite. He takes the deaf and the mute man aside, away from the crowds, before he does anything in restoring his speech and his hearing. And then after the miracle, he tells all of those who are who have witnessed it not to tell anybody. That's bizarre behavior. Why would he perform a miracle in private and then tell people not to talk about it? Because Jesus is concerned about the one, the one meek man, and the one demon-possessed girl. Jesus is so different from the famous people of our day. <laughs> Our Lord sought to go away to a quiet place with the disciples, only to find that the crowds already beat him there. And then rather than rejecting the crowds, he has compassion upon them. He shows the same compassion to the deaf man as Jesus is always concerned about the one human being as well as hurting people. The Lord Jesus does not go around seeking great crowds because Mark says he often does quite the opposite. And yet he is the same Jesus in private <coughs> as he is in public. There are not two different personas for this Messiah. What you see is what you get in Jesus. He is just as concerned for the woman with the discharge of blood as he is for the daughter of the synagogue ruler. He is the same Jesus when he is alone with Peter, James, and John as he is with the crowd who ate the loaves and the fish. He is the same Jesus when the soldiers strike him and when the criminals insult him. He's the same Jesus, always and forever. And Jesus' concern for the deaf and the mute is also a deep-seated love and concern for you. The one who touched the unclean and associated with tax collectors, prostitutes, even Gentiles, the concern for you and for the hurts and the pains that you bear. And what? who looked that deaf and mute man right in the eye and touched his finger to the man's tongue, comes to you with his mercy to love and to forgive and to restore you. He still comes to open ears and release tongues. And he sets us free through the baptismal waters and the commanding word. He's concerned for the one who's held in bondage by addiction, by false social yeah, ways of, of thinking. And he's also concerned about the one who is broken by guilt. Through the forgiving word of absolution, he still frees those who are held captive by their past. And what comfort that is for those who feel forgotten and alone. He doesn't forget the individual 
who comes to the table for that individual receives Jesus, his body, and his blood to restore you. Oh yeah, there were certainly crowds that were amazed by Jesus during his earthly ministry. But this reading from Mark reminds us that Jesus' larger concern is for each and every person. That's just the sort of Lord Jesus is. He does all things well, from obeying his parents to submitting to the laws of the land. Jesus is always the dutiful servant. As a teacher, he teaches his hearers what is good, right, and true. As a king, he shows mercy to the least and lowest. As savior, he comes to rescue those who are lost and forgotten. And Jesus can only do this good because he is God, and God is good. Therefore, wherever Jesus goes, he does what is good and pleasing to his heavenly Father. He always submits to his Father's will, and we confess that that will is very good. At the end of the Father's creating, the Father looked at all that he had done and declared that it was good. After Jesus restored the Syrophoenician woman's daughter and the deaf and mute man, the people made the obvious observation, he does all things well. Yes, he does. And he doesn't stop doing all things well. He did it right up to the end when he cried out from the cross at his finish. He had completed his work of recreation and looked over what he'd done and declared that his work was complete and that it was good. And he still keeps doing good as he strengthens the weak and comforts the sorrowful and shows mercy to the forsaken and forgiveness to the contrite. Right now, today, we need to be reminded that Christ Jesus does all things well. When we suffer all sorts of hardships and difficulties, our Lord is still doing all things well. When the treatments do not bring the healing for which we have hoped, our Lord continues to do all things well as he grants the grace to endure the suffering. When we look around the world and see the violence and the terror and the hunger and disease, the flood and wildfires, we are comforted in knowing that our Lord is continuing to do all things well. He continues to accomplish his good and gracious will as his words proclaim. He continues to accomplish his good and gracious will as saints of God serve in their daily callings. As it is those various saints who serve their neighbors, volunteering to help disaster victims. And as the sick receive healing through doctors serving as God's instrument. As the hungry are fed by the service of countless Hands. Seeing evil in our world does not mean that Christ Jesus is not doing all things well anymore. On the contrary, in this evil world, he continues to break and hinder the plans of the devil and to, and to serve through his holy ones however and wherever they serve and usually without notice or fanfare. But Jesus does all things well, even when he shows us your sin and shows us your rebellion. He does all things well when you're called to repentance and he forgives you all of your sins for the sake of his death on the cross. Our Lord Jesus Christ did all things well during his earthly ministry 
and he continues to do all things well as his word is complained, proclaimed and as the church, his body, serves as his hands and his feet in the service of our world. As our Lord does all things well, he still shows care and concern for each person in need. Jesus does all things and does each person well. And this loving concern brings comfort and peace to each one of us as we endure the suffering in this world and as we look forward to Jesus' final good work of bringing us to the Father and the resurrection of the last day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and the peace of God which has to all understanding to keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus' Bible.